The most well-known vehicles of the Wehrmacht are obviously the fearsome Panthers, the thick-armored Fernadans, and the mighty Tigers. On paper, those vehicles were almost perfect, but in reality, each of them came with at least a few big caveats, from their exorbitant price to overly complicated maintenance. Regardless, there was still a lot of work in the field that needed to be done, and that work was mostly carried out by less flashy or famous tanks, like the Panzerkampfwagen IV and SPGs, like the Sturmgeschütz III, also known as the Stuck. The development of the Stuck started in 1935. As the country was getting ready for war, General Erich von Manstein proposed the idea of an armored, self-propelled gun to support the infantry. The army needed a well-armored SPG with a low profile that would be capable of dealing with both enemy infantry and enemy armor. The task to develop this vehicle was handed to Daimler-Benz that had previously created a somewhat similar design for the USSR. Engineers built the vehicle on a Panzer III chassis, but replaced the turret with an armored, fixed superstructure that housed a 75mm gun. The chassis wasn't the only thing that the new SPG inherited from the Panzer III. It also got its 300 horsepower Maybach engine. All in all, it was cheaper to produce a single Stug III than a single Panzer IV that carried almost the same gun housed in a rotating turret. But the military were initially very hesitant to put the new vehicle into mass production. Then the war started, though, and the German decision makers realized that they needed the Stug. The production of the first model, the Stug 3A, began at the end of 1939. At the time, Daimler Benz made around 30 of them. Several variants of the vehicle that were introduced later weren't that different from the original model, but it had one unique feature the roof of the crew compartment was 11 millimeters thick. The new SPG proved to be fairly effective from the very beginning of World War II. Its gun performed pretty well against any type of target, and its armor provided enough protection against 37mm and 45mm shells. As the war went on, however, new threats and challenges emerged, forcing German engineers to introduce new versions of the design, especially after the invasion of the Soviet Union. For instance, in War Thunder, there's a later variant of the first-generation Stug, the Stug 3F. German engineers equipped the vehicle with a longer 75mm gun and redesigned the casemate structure to get rid of one of its weak points. On the other hand, the new version had worse gun depression than the previous models. It went down from minus 10 degrees to only minus 6 degrees. The F variant was also three tons heavier than its predecessor. But the most produced variant of the SPG was the Stug 3G, which was a big upgrade over previous models. It received an even more powerful gun with the same caliber but better handling, and was fitted with more armor in the front, up to 80 millimeters of armor in fact. Furthermore, the vehicle was fitted with side plates for increased protection. The engine remained the same though, so the vehicle lost some of its mobility. The Stug 3G, as well as other variants of the tank destroyer, was produced by Alkit. But it's important to note that in the case of the 3G, Alkit was joined by Miag as a second manufacturer. Thanks to an increase in production capacity, Germans were able to make thousands of Stugs. By the end of the war, the Stug was Germany's most produced fully tracked armored fighting vehicle, with more than 10,000 vehicles rolling off the factory floor. That's right. Even Panthers and the Panzer IV couldn't compete with these numbers. Some of those tank destroyers were sent to Italy, Finland, and other allies of Germany. Even though a longer barrel and increased anti-tank capabilities of late 75mm cannons clearly made the latest models of the Stug a better tank destroyer, the vehicle was no longer as effective in its original role as a mobile assault gun for direct fire support for infantry. As the army still needed a strong infantry support vehicle, Daimler-Benz created the Sturmhaubitze 42, an SPG armed with a 105mm howitzer. These vehicles turned out to be fairly useful. For instance, they were actively employed in the Battle of Kursk. The Stug III wasn't just an important asset to the German armored forces. It was a trendsetter for tank destroyers with an enclosed superstructure, the likes of which were later designed by German, 
Soviet, and even French engineers. The vehicles of the series were used by several countries up to the mid-1950s. In other words, right until they were clearly obsolete. Do you have a favorite model? Tell us in the comments below.